Hi, and welcome back to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today has been a long-awaited video because I've been waiting on some freaking internet sellers to give me the parts I need to make our turbo nicely controlled. This is the Go Fast Bits V2 Boost Controller, which no less than like 20 people screamed at me in the comments to try. And so after giving the Arduino setup a full and complete burn in my opinion, and seeing how that thing works, I want to give a vacuum controlled system a full and complete burn. And so today I'm hoping to install this right here on this engine and see how it works. This is my 1984 VW Rabbit running a 1.6 liter turbo diesel and the turbocharger on it right now is a GT2256 VK which is actually what a Mercedes inline six 2.7 liter Sprinter van uses. And it works really well when it works. And the problem is that the Arduino setup I'm using to control it right now doesn't work all the time. And that's frustrating. This is really easy. You just connect four vacuum lines to it. But what isn't as quick is I need to actually convert my currently 12 volt linear actuator controlled turbocharger to a vacuum actuated VNT turbocharger. Fortunately, I have a VNT VW turbo with its actuator on it. So it's a matter of adapting the VW vacuum actuator onto my Sprinter van turbo. And then I need to make my vacuum pump work again real quick. And then I gotta run a bunch of vacuum lines and probably tap a fitting or two. So there's definitely work to be done. This might be a two day project, but we're gonna see how much I can get done right now. We gotta get my old turbo, well, the current turbo out of here because I think adapting the control system is gonna take a little bit of fab work, just a little bit. But uh turbo is out. Also, it would look way more sick if it was right here. Should figure out how to do that. I'd be sick if the turbo was like right there. Definitely the whole oil back pressure blow by thing. There's like hella gum in there. Veins are honestly decently gummy themselves, but still moving. This is a turbo off of an ALH. Uh, it's a pretty small turbo. If I had to guess though, I would say this is probably like a GT15. It looks really small. This, by comparison, is a GT22. Quite a decent step up in compressor size and such. Uh, honestly, this, Turbo is pretty big for my 1.6. I get surge if I drive with too much boost at too high a gear, but that is kind of entirely a me problem. And I expect that once I put the ALH motor in, I will no longer have such a bad surge problem on higher gears. I don't have the linear actuator on this one right now, but it went right here and would do that. That's all I had to do. Now over here, by contrast, uh, this is a vacuum pump, so it sucks, huh? And as you apply vacuum to this actuator, it moves. So right now, it moves the veins. Get the instant replay. And that's how this VNT system works. And that's just the control system for the veins. So all we gotta do is take this part of it and put it over here. Now. You know, we'll see how that goes based on space and stuff. There's a lot of things going on on this one, so it might take a second. Okay, so. At first glance, this uh, this attachment here on this guy is a little bit deeper. Or it's too thick to get the snap ring on this other style. So I'll have to use my old attachment point, which is fine. And then if you look up here, can't really like put this too low because it'll hit. I could cut off some of this aluminum, but then I would have nothing nice to mount to. So it looks to me like this first hole here lines up with this pre-existing mounting hole. So then all I really need to do is just drill another mounting hole that's like 
kind of awkwardly in the middle of this thing. As an aside, this thing is really starting to look like an experimental turbo. We got all kinds of weird shit attached to it in all kinds of places. And I'm not going to take any of it off right now. I'm just going to leave it right there. Uh, and then on the next round, when we put the ALH in, I'll buy a new center cartridge for this and we'll clean everything up a bit more professional. This already has this actually very nice adjustment mechanism on it. So I'm going to leave that on there and put it kind of in the middle of its travel. So I have adjustment. And then I'm going to take my old one of these. I'm going to cut the rest of this bolt off or use this one. Either one will work. But essentially I'm just using this thing at the end to be the fitting head. Uh, so imagine that's there. And then I'm going to cut the head whoa, off this bolt because all I'm really after is a thin shaft. And I want to keep it away from this flange anyway. So I think I'm going to offset it a little. Okay, so right here's the moment of truth. I got my linkage jankily welded to the rest of the linkage, and we're gonna see how this will work. And that's full extension, and that's full of veins, so we're good. I'm gonna weld that better. I'm gonna clean up. Got the turbo in the car. Um, I might cut out for like half of those last shots, which is unfortunate, but basically the actuator from the TDI turbo fit up great. I did some quick fabrication, a little polishing it up. That all went super smoothly. Turbo's back in the car and looking very nice. Uh, and I have high hopes for this thing to work. So all that's really left to do is to run some plumbing. I have some vacuum line. I have the valve, the go fast bits valve. Uh, and I have a couple other T's I need to run, but essentially there's four lines. Turbo, which is actually what controls your actuator. There's intake, which is this pipe. Uh, there's vacuum, which I had to reinstall my vacuum pump a bit, but it's in. And then there's boost. So I just need to run these four lines to this valve and get my plumbing reconnected and then should be able to go out and actually start tuning this thing, which is super exciting. I have all the connections done up and I have extra length in this because what I really want to do is after this initial fire up and test, I want to run this inside the car so I can adjust it while I'm driving and testing and not have to get out and take the hood off a bunch of times. But here we go. It's the GoFastBits V2 boost controller. Uh, and just to make it very clear how everything's hooked up, this here's my vacuum pump. So this is the vacuum line that goes to vacuum. This is boost, it's teed into my boost line, which ultimately picks up right over here. This is turbo, which actually runs to the actuator, the vacuum actuator on the turbo. And this is intake, which runs to that fitting right behind here on this intake pipe we got. And that's it. That's all there is. So initial settings, go fast bits recommends turning the rise rate all the way up, which is all the way in, as you can see. And they recommend turning your boost all the way down, which is all the way out. So uh, the way this goes is uh, we'll turn the car on and then we fiddle with rise rate until the actuator just barely starts actuating. And then we take it for a drive. Uh, and then as we're test driving, we're gonna slowly increase boost until we're hitting the level we want. And then we kind of play with rise rate until it is boosting the way we want as well. So rise rate when it's faster means it's opening up your turbo sooner which means you won't boost as hard as soon uh, the conversely if i play with this too much and we turn rise rate way too low then you might get a really gnarly boost spike and the veins won't open fast enough so kind of have to play with these two things as we're driving but for now i have it all hooked up like this just to test it i need to tighten one more clamp and double check my oil lines. Always double check your oil lines because when they're not connected, it sucks. 
uh, and then we'll be ready to fire this up and So in wanting to check if we were getting vacuum, uh, I broke this off the vacuum pump. Not terribly helpful. And it seems like maybe I wasn't getting vacuum. I am missing one of four veins in here. Fortunately, I have the good old classic <laughs> diaphragm pump off one of my other motors. So I'm gonna throw this on. <laughs> Where normally this connects to that belly button hole on the motor and this provides a vacuum. I don't think I need to connect this to anything. Uh, just vent it to atmosphere since it's sucking air from this side. And that, that has a vacuum, there you go. Did you hear that? If I twist this baby up. <laughs> okay, I'll install this. Uh, we'll reconnect and uh, we'll try again. Whenever you install a vacuum pump, this is also what translates the intermediate shaft to your oil pump. So you got to make sure it's lined up correctly. It won't go all the way down into its seat if it's not lined up correctly, but I am still going to start this and anxiously watch my oil pressure gauge to make sure that that is correct. And then I'm going to come out and make sure we have vacuum and then we're going to try this all again. All right, we have plenty of oil pressure, and we definitely have vacuum. Hear that change? Cool, so we now definitely have enough vacuum. Okay, so my vacuum pump, my previous vacuum pump wasn't working, which everyone that says the new style vein pumps are sick, uh, I don't see what you hate against the diaphragm. This thing it chugs. Uh, and at any rate, got it all tuned up the way it should be now that there's vacuum in the system because vacuum is actually what actuates this. So you definitely need vacuum. Uh, and so you adjust the rise rate just until that actuator rod starts to hit almost neutral buoyancy. Uh, and then I turned it back just a little bit from there. settings. Car is not quite warm yet. So right off the bat, a lot of drive pressure. I think I'm going to turn it back down a bit. Initial impression was not very sick. I double checked that the actuator has enough travel to really open the veins and it seems like it does. But what I'm immediately noticing is that I'm just kind of like pegging drive pressure and getting not that much boost. So it feels like it's not really working. So I just readjusted the rise rate, still have the boost really low. Um, but if this thing just pegs your drive pressure all the time, that's uh, kind of useless. All right, so, I mean, uh, this is me cruising. I have a bunch of back pressure. I have like a few pounds of boost. I'm in fifth gear, if I'm at it, my drive pressure spikes pretty bad, uh, which which might be the fact of how it's adjusted. That might be worth trying. But you can hear the the surge it's surging really bad. Okay, so here's what it's doing now. I turned the rise rate down. So it's like almost doing what you want. Boost is now at about 15, but it still spikes. Watch. So it must not be moving enough.
this none of this went at all how I thought it was going to go. I finally got everything in there and squared away and it just doesn't seem to work right. I think probably the primary cause of that is that the vacuum actuator I'm using has too short of a throw for the turbo, but I feel like I checked the throw before I put everything together and it worked and it looked fine. It was moving as much as it's ever moved. And now I get the go fast bits on there. I adjust it 20 different ways, try a bunch of different things. And no matter what I do, it seems to work okay uh, at low RPMs. And as soon as I actually get on the gas at high RPMs, it like closes the veins back down and everything surges and it works terrible. I thought this thing was gonna be a silver bullet, honestly, and it works even worse than my Arduino controller ever did. <laughs> Oh, so I even looked at the Arduino controller today and I was like, well, this doesn't look so bad anymore. And it seems like the reason that one failed last was the linear actuator broke. So I might order a new actuator uh, now that I'm seeing that the go fast bits honestly sucks currently. Currently it sucks. It makes the car drivable, but not performance at all. And I couldn't possibly recommend it, but I feel like that has to do with the way I have it set up. Maybe I did reach out to support. So in the interim, Screw that thing. I'm probably not going to use it because the other problem is if I need to get a different vacuum actuator, then I have to go looking for a vacuum actuator that has more stroke somehow. And I don't know how to find one of those. Uh, and that's also not that cheap. So currently I'm like, well, we should definitely make the Arduino work then since this thing works like trash. But I'm here for discussion. If you have a thought as to why it works like trash, because you have it and it doesn't work like trash, please let me know uh, in the comments. I would love to see your theory and uh, go back and forth with you about what it might be. But in the meantime, I'm pretty bummed because I thought that was going to make my car sick. And instead, the car is... It's okay. That's all it is. It's okay. <laughs> Oh, so, you know, not the slam dunk video I was looking for, but this is reality, folks. Uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate you out there. And stay tuned as I continue to struggle through how to control a VNT turbocharger without OEM controls on it. Thank you. Have a nice day out there. <laughs>